Uh, yeah. I just keep it steady on the magic. Do my thing, I'm healing, it's fantastic. If I fall, rise automatic. You ain't no now, you know. Only one rain myself like a tree from the roots. West side girl, cause she lived in the coast. East side girl, when she speaks to the roots. Stay 100, cause she on with the truth. Been there on struggle, know that it passed. Only going up, yeah, the pain don't last. Ooh, take off. Ooh, take off. Ooh, take off. Yes, sir. Take off, take off, take off. Shorty like Brandy, fight like Monica. What you know about her? Baby girl raising, way to the top. Shaking the world, don't expect her to stop. Hope so great, she get what she got. Follow her stack, cause she following God. What you need more, got a heart full of gold. Even at times when it's raining and cold. Ooh, she about to take off. What up, what up, what up? It's your girl, Hannah, <laughs> a.k.a. Ruta, and you are watching Black Women Wednesday on the Uprooted Network. Y'all, today I have a very special guest, one that I have been waiting <laughs> to have on the show for quite a while. Y'all might be familiar with the most amazing artist. Uh, oh, I was about to say Gabby, but she changed the name. Gabrielle, okay. Um <laughs> Y'all, I'm telling you, I've been I've been high key uh, just stalking your art for a while. Like in the last couple of months, I'm like, oh, look at this. This there's some nice <laughs> there's some nice imagery that I can look at instead of really bad headlines, mm. right? Um, mm. And I, you know, I have an appreciation for art. So that was my introduction. I found I found Gabby on Instagram, and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> like. There's there's someone like us that does this. This is insane. And um mm -hmm. just decided to be like, hey, would you want to come on the podcast? <laughs> and you know, we finally made it happen. So welcome, Gabby. Welcome to Uprooted. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. And I loved your intro. Very nice. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I told you I had that's um the song was by Sam. Um, Sam Kasai. I don't know if you guys are are familiar but he is uh out of denver and he does some really cool mm -hmm. music so yeah I, you know i hit him up i was like hey um you trying to make my intro song for me <laughs> oh you made it like, specifically for your intro that's nice yeah 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 you know i gotta be extra i didn't want like a, i didn't yes. want to just take one of his songs i was like no i want my own song um yes. so <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a personal one it feels good but um yeah, welcome, first and foremost, and this yeah. is going to be fun, this is going to be exciting, because <laughs> it, it's been a while since I've done um, any episodes, but mm -hmm. Black Woman Wednesday, welcome back. Is, I don't think, <laughs> Black Woman Wednesday is really, like, I'm not supposed to have, like, favorite, okay, Man Manifest Monday is really my favorite, but, like, Black Woman Wednesday mm -hmm. is where I started, um, mm -hmm. really starting to, like, understand like oh there's there's really a beautiful thing of like just sharing space and um having conversation openly with with other women that was so healing and therapeutic to me um mm -hmm. that like I've loved this segment so I'm really excited to have it back um and to be re-recording and this this time around I think really I want to talk about our uprooted journey and like really the how of it you know, how did we get to where we're at? Um, what were kind of those those moments that we were like, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but I'm gonna do it anyways, right? And like, mm -hmm. do we take kind of risks to get where we're at? And that's really what this whole um, this whole spring is gonna be about. Is like, yo, let's mm -hmm. do a deeper dive into ourselves and and how we understand mm -hmm. our identity and. Um, I mm -hmm. always love artists because I know y'all think about this stuff. And so I'm like, <laughs> yes, let's get Gabby on. Um, you've had quite an interesting journey from at least from the outside looking in, right? Mm -hmm. um, you've traveled and lived in a lot of different places, right? Um, but also from what I understand, like actually making art your full-time like career, something that you're passionate about, and then yep. you get to do it all the time, right? I think it's so yep. impressive. <laughs> and a lot of people get so confused. So mm -hmm. like, how the hell does she do it? And I'm like, I'm nosy too. I want to know <laughs> how, <laughs> how you got to this place. So whatever you, wherever you feel comfortable kind of jumping mm -hmm. in, 
um, about like, what was that journey like of, did you, you just knew you were gonna be a professional artist? Like, it was, that's so cool. Um, so I've been doing art all my life and mm -hmm. I'm really grateful to my child self because I, she, like my child self was the one who chose this for me. I chose mm -hmm. art at a really young age. Mm -hmm. I was really connected to it and even trying to figure out, okay, what was like, it's hard to remember our thought process when we were that young. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, but I mean, I, al I always loved art. When we're kids, we play with dolls, we play with crayons and I just, I kept painting, I kept drawing. Um, Art became like how I understand the world around me and how I communicate about it and my feelings. And um, yeah, I, I decided a, at a young age, like I am an artist and I'm gonna do it for the rest of my life. And there's nothing else I have to do except this. And, <laughs> yeah, and I stayed with it my entire life and how it came to be now where I do it full time. I'd say it started when, um, so when I was 19, I mm -hmm. moved out of my parents' house and I started living on my own and I mm -hmm. moved to New York City. I had this dream like I need to go to New York and I need to yeah. be an artist in New York. Especially a lot of us who grew up in like smaller cities in the U.S. Like we look at bigger cities um, as places where you can really like make it and become like a true version of whatever it is you want to do. And I was like, I have to go to New York and I'll mm -hmm. become a great artist there. And all this, like this idea that I had and I was obsessed with this idea of moving to New York. And I made like a whole vision board with pictures of New York I love vision <laughs> and, <board. laughs> and I put it on my window and I would pray to these pictures of New York every mm -hmm night like I'm gonna go I'm gonna move to New York I was so obsessed with moving there yes. and yeah when I was 19 I finally did it and when I got there it was not mm -hmm. what I thought it would be as a lot of things <laughs> are in life like that mm -hmm. um, yeah that's not the city yeah. of dreams that's the city of broken dreams yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah yeah yeah. Oh, yeah. I was definitely very, very broken. I actually turned into a hermit there. My life there was way different than what I thought. But I was 19, you know, like, what did I know? Um, but when I moved there and I thought I would be, like, really out, um, I don't know, at places, at events, meeting people, yeah. and I became a hermit. Uh, I was in time. Um but one thing that I remember about this time in my life is that I was in like deep, deep creation mode. I was making mm -hmm. art at all hours of the night. Mm -hmm. And I can't do that now. My body just doesn't let me do it now. I need to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm not up at 3 a.m., 2 a.m. like I used to be when I was like yeah. 19, 20, 21. Uh, but it was that time in my life where I was such a hermit huge city and I was making art so much um, and really just diving deep into these ideas that I was tapping into for the very first time uh, mm -hmm. within my creativity. And you, yeah, one day I just quit my job. I was working at Urban Outfitters at the time and I'm like, I, I decided that giving my time to mm -hmm. anything that is not my art the future that I envision with my art is mm -hmm. just going back or any time that I'm giving to something else that is not my art. Like literally mm -hmm. this, I was watching my paintings not getting done because I was yeah. working at a job at Urban Outfitters in um, Soho, you know, or whatever that neighborhood was. I don't even remember, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and I just, one day I was like, yeah, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I just need to like jump into the void and take a huge leap of faith mm -hmm. and just decide that if it is really meant to be, I need to just only do my art and it's going to take care of itself. And that was yeah. really crazy because I'm like, I didn't have a huge savings or anything. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how I was going to pay rent a month. 
but I decided to just like photograph my work and put and open a website, uh, mm -hmm. open my shop, uh, the website that I still have now, and just do it. And I posted art for sale, really, really low price. I just started yeah. off and like paintings for like $50 and stuff. When I was 20, I was yeah. like, oh God, if like somebody buys a painting of mine for $50, like, oh my God, that would be a yeah. huge deal for me, you know? Yeah. And yeah, and I made it happen. And then things have just aligned. Like I got a commission, my first commission mm -hmm. for like $500. And for me, that was like, oh my God, like I'm doing the commission for $500. It's huge. And I paid yeah. my rent with that, you know? So things mm -hmm. just, um, when I aligned myself with my, with my passion, like completely things started happening. Um, yeah. And I eventually didn't stay in New York and I eventually moved back home, not to my parents' house, but I got my own place mm -hmm. and yeah. And then from there, an opportunity to go to Thailand opened up. And then <laughs> I moved out of the country. So New York was not where I was meant to be forever. Mm -hmm. But it's where I ended up going to discover what it meant to live without fear and dive fully into my art and what it looked like to have a life solely on my with just my art. Because mm -hmm. um yeah, I was can I moved there for that, you know? Yeah. I was like, I moved, yeah, yeah. I, my life, I moved all the way New York to New York for this. Like, I have to yeah. make it worth it. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. So it was just, you know, I look at things in our lives as symbols. Like, if this, mm -hmm. if this experience in my life was a tarot card, like, if it was an illustration oh. on a card, what is this card saying? You know, what is the meaning of it? And yeah. that phase of my life in New York, the meaning of that was jump into the void for the very first time and see what happens. And ever mm. since then, I've been doing all sorts of shit where I'm just <laughs> like doing things very fearlessly and seeing what happens. And yeah. it's been nothing but blessings. So that's yeah. that's quite a journey. Um mm -hmm. I was like, I'm just going to let her like tell it because there's, there was a lot to unpack that you understood at a young age that people are trying to relearn now, right? Like that I'm trying to reteach people. Mm. It was like, you know, um, I, I would pull out one that at a young age, you understood that your value was not um, tied to anything else, you know, like, you, like the fact that you're able to declaratively say, right? Like I am an artist um, at, an, at a young age where usually people are telling us what we're supposed to be, right? Or like trying to yeah. gauge or push us in a direction. And then to just be like, I'm gonna like, I'm, I can see it so clearly, like you had vision, right? And like you, yeah. had, um, you had enough gumption to like be like, no, this is it. It's meant to be and like not get yeah. persuaded out of it. Because I think what yeah. happens yeah. is that we do get persuaded out of it. So I guess I'm kind of curious because um, there's a lot that, you know, I want to go back to. But, you know, there was mm -hmm. you, vi you visualize you manifested the hell out of it. And then you actually took the leap. Right. Because there's like the part where you have to jump. That part's scary. And, and we can come back to that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm wondering, did your parents or um you know, community or whoever else was around you at that, you know, in your adolescence, kind of like support that and nourish that in you? Or mm -hmm. um, do you feel like anybody was trying to sway you out of it? Like what, you know, because I know that's not something most Habesha parents are going to be like, yeah, yeah, be an artist. They're going to be like, that's cute. <laughs> you know, like. Yeah. Uh, um, so being an artist, my parents, they put me into, they wanted me to just explore a lot of different things uh, growing mm -hmm. up. So um, I was on a soccer team. I was on a swim team. Mm -hmm. I had played piano. I played cello. I went to writing camps, like creative writing camps. Um, mm -hmm. And I 
I took art classes at the museum. Uh, what else? They just exposed me to a lot of different things. Um, mm -hmm. They made sure that I read a lot, like a lot, a lot of books. They made sure I was like an avid reader, like serious reader. Um, yes. And they just wanted to expose me to everything. Um, and I eventually chose, and I also went to art school growing up. Mm -hmm. um, it was a public school, so it wasn't like, you know, yeah. like a, I don't know, fancy art school or anything. <laughs> yeah. It was all public school, and our schools were very, like, low-funded, kind of struggling. Mm -hmm. But it was at my schools where I learned how to create magic out of very little. And mm -hmm. it was definitely in my upbringing at my public schools where um, we just learned how to create amazing creations from what we had. And mm -hmm. I think that is what my, um, where my talent comes from, like what it was fostered mm -hmm. by. Yeah. And a lot of so talented, I mean, not just myself at drawing like I will with so many talented special gifted kids that mm -hmm. were able to make amazing art with so little and I think all of our parents saw that um, yeah and it was special and yeah these environments were were special and the teachers were artists and they were special and I think it was just this collective environment of of wanting to raise us um, to be people who valued the talent that we had. Mm -hmm. And my parents supported that. So yeah, I eventually stopped the soccer and the swim team and I stopped mm -hmm. the music, uh, which I, I did love my music, but I eventually stopped that. And I stuck with, uh, with the art, with the visual mm -hmm. art. And yeah, That's they... Hmm? No, go ahead. Finish. Finish your thought. And they supported that. I mean, there was time of them. So you should have a plan B. You know, that was mm -hmm. that conversation happened a lot. You should have a plan B. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you be a teacher or you're a great writer? Maybe mm -hmm. you should be an author, but don't just do art like you need to have a plan B. And it's mm -hmm. interesting remembering that they used to say that because they don't say that anymore. I mean, inside of me, like my relationship with my art was like the secret inside of me. I mean, everyone knew I loved it and I wanted to do it. And mm -hmm. I was also a very strong-willed child. You could tell me anything. Mm -hmm. I was very strong-willed. Just like home one day and I was like, I'm a vegetarian. I'm never eating meat again. I was 10 years old. And my parents <laughs> were like, well, what are you going to eat? Because we are not a vegetarian household, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, no. No, I'm 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 a vegetarian and I've been a vegetarian since then. Like I was just extremely strong willed and yeah. headed and passionate and I've been and I'm still that way. Um so yeah, I just knew inside of me like they're saying I need a plan B, but I know that I don't need a plan B. <laughs> and I'm just gonna quietly show them. I never I never would fight with them about it, like yeah. I, in doing art, you know, I would never fight with them. I'm like it's so sacred to me, and I know mm. it's going to happen, that I don't need to fight with them or convince them. Like, I'll show them through my progress. And that was <laughs> another thing that motivated me when I was in New York. Like, you know, show them. Show them. And you moved That's all the way so to New York for this. Like, show yeah. yourself, you know? Yeah. That's really amazing. Because there's, there's some things I would be resolute on. Um, but my mom had a really good way of making sense to me. Like, you know, <laughs> like I would, <laughs> I'm being honest, man. Like there, I get worked up too. I know what you're talking about, right? Like I'd come in and my mom um, and dad always say this, like, oh, don't get her started. You know, like they'd be like, all right, Jemmy, <laughs> like, you know, like she's, not... and I was like, mm -hmm. no, that's not right. And I get on whatever high horse I was on that day. Right. Like, whether it's, you know, how we treat, um, you know, people or animals that day, or I don't know, like I would, it was always, I realized for me, it was always in protection of something else. 
you know Mm -hmm. like i would be like that's just not right that's not fair people shouldn't be able to do that right like you shouldn't be able to hurt people Mm -hmm. and so i was always Mm -hmm. on that like self just like or social justice like that righteous whatever i don't know if it mm-hmm. was the babe that nurtured that in me but i had a talk back mm-hmm. spirit too and i was like mm, mm-hmm. no no but my mom was like really good at like okay no that's okay Routie. and like she would like kind of talk to me and try to calm me down and then try to understand what the frustration is and she go like she would we would find a way to come to a middle ground but my mom's mm-hmm. also been on my side she's always on my side so she's just mm-hmm. like, no, you don't need it. You don't want it. You just did it. Like, you know, like it's, mm-hmm. it's been a, an interesting thing. But I think, you know, it's a responsible parent thing to tell us to have a plan B. You know, like, I right. think, yeah, like that's their job. We don't want to listen, right. but it is their job to be like, hey, right. but like also protect yourself, yeah. you know, like yeah. try. Yeah. Um, so that's hilarious because I could just imagine trying to be your parent and be like, she's just gonna have to do it on her own (laughs) like there's not anything we're gonna be able to do about this so that's pretty insane so at this point in your you've you've at least explored right like I think that's the least that you could do is like you actually explored other things and all it did was just further validate that like no I really like this thing right like I did mm-hmm. all the other things. It wasn't like I was being stubborn. I'm open to experiencing other things, but I just know this is mine. And I feel like mm-hmm. very few people, if they did know, right, like it, it did get snuffed out. And I think there's very few people who know that and who like just stay on that path, right? Um, which mm-hmm. I think is super amazing. So you have your visualization, you have your, you have a support system, you know, that is encouraging um you have Mm -hmm. you know the wherewithal in yourself to like have Mm -hmm. the you know the confidence um or you know like sometimes I tell myself I just lack (laughs) self-preservation you know Mm -hmm. and I just like go out there I mean you take it how you want right like they're like you're that was really brave of you I was like yeah maybe or maybe I just really didn't think (laughs) this all the way through but I did it anyways right like I'll just yeah Oh, not yeah. all situations, but some of them, I'm like, yeah, you gotta oh, yeah. just leave. Um, yeah, I'm wondering, yeah, what were you know you can choose, but like, what were kind of the big moments of oh, I learned that lesson, like you know, like because I know you're mm-hmm. saying New York was hard, right? Mm-hmm. And you finally quit and and um, took art mm-hmm. full time. And I do want to dive back into that because there's something really powerful mm-hmm. about moving in alignment and letting the universe answer the rest of it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. cause that's a, that's a, that's a beautiful level of trust that I'm still working on. Um, mm-hmm. and I think that's dope. So I'm wondering what were, what were some of the other hurdles? Cause you said that you turned into a hermit, right? Meaning mm-hmm. you weren't before. So in what mm-hmm. ways did you feel like that journey was changing you, you know? Um, hmm. Well, when I moved to New York, I mean, I had, I had the intention of going there and being like a super outgoing person mm-hmm. um, and like really involved with the art world there and the friends like and being very social like um and being a part of art events like I had this idea of what I wanted and yeah I did the opposite and I think the reasoning um I mean the the conditions in which I went there were not the most ideal <laughs> mm-hmm. and also yeah the experiences that i had there like personal experiences um are what influenced me i think to go into my shell Mm -hmm. um yeah like for example i think one of the reasons why i really wanted to leave my hometown and move to new york Mm -hmm. um I had gotten out of a abusive relationship and I was only 19 at this time. And I was with um, a man older than me and it was a very abusive relationship and I finally got out of it. And 
I thought that moving to New York and following mm -hmm. my dreams would like fix all of that that I had gone through, mm -hmm. but it still carried with me um, when I got there, as well as a whole bunch of other experiences I had in New York, mm -hmm. which were extremely, extremely traumatic, probably some of the most traumatic things I've ever been through in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, I ended up not being that outgoing and involved with an art uh, socially mm -hmm. that I thought I would. And that's why I became a hermit in that way and just mm -hmm. stayed to myself. Um, and a part of me was really disappointed in myself for that. Um, and yeah, just, I also realized how it was hard for me to overcome, like, my shyness and my self-consciousness and how my motivation was able to get me somewhere, like mm -hmm. physically get me somewhere, but when it came to seizing the moment and seizing opportunities, like being in this place that I worked so hard to be in. Yeah. That's when I faced a lot of different hurdles um, yeah. and having to present to myself and being in New York where there are so many different personalities and mm -hmm. fashion and just a whole bunch of things. I, yeah, I just, I don't know, something in me just repelled it. Um, mm -hmm. And it could have been a combination of things, like it still being new to me, wanting to fit in, not knowing how, um, and the personal things that I was going through in my life and at such a young age. Yeah. It was just a lot. It was a lot of different things. Um, but I don't regret anything <clears throat> because being a hermit meant that I was inside a lot making art, and that is what I went there to do. So Yeah. I, I accomplished what I went there to do. Yeah, no, that's one, first and foremost, thank you for sharing, right? I never take those mm -hmm. moments for granted. Um, like I'm a survivor of abuse myself, right? Um, mm -hmm. And it's not easy to talk about, you know? Like I remember last year I wrote a poem um, and put that out. And, and so I can imagine, you know, you put it in your art right? Like you put all of that in your art and you process mm -hmm. that. And, and it doesn't matter how many times you say it, like it still hurts that it happened, you know, even though mm -hmm. like we've probably done a lot of work on ourselves to get to a point where we can say it even out loud. Mm -hmm. um, I always like to just take the moment to just say like, you know, thank you for sharing and being vulnerable. And, and um, I'm glad you're in a space in your life where you feel like you can you know, mm -hmm. that's not, easy, it's not, a, it's not an easy thing to do at all. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I hate when people, I hate when people say those things and then they just keep like, like nobody pauses the conversation. I'm like, hold on. What you mean? Like <laughs> y'all barely tell people yeah. what your favorite color is. Like that's not, you right, know, like right. that's not yeah, something no. we, we gloss over because yeah. it is, um, I think even in how you're talking about it, right. It's like, I can tell you've done the work around it, right? Like you, you could tell that one, you were young, you, it's not like you were mm -hmm. in a position to know better. Right. Um, yeah. It's not like you called that into your life. Right. Um, and mm -hmm. New York too is not, a, I, I wasn't joking when I said it's where dreams get broken. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, like there's really, it's not an easy city to get, buy in like you know it's like a doggy dog world and so i can imagine um what that process is like just based off of people i know that have tried to take that journey mm -hmm. um or have done it through la it's mm -hmm. it's those are not those are not easy cities to try to like be young and full of life and have mm -hmm. dreams and all Very of true. those things there's a lot of rejection right in these spaces a lot of rejection um and there's a lot of people who want to and i think with artists right we're all very in tune with our emotions <laughs> like we might not share them out loud publicly all the time um we're definitely in tune with our emotions and i think when you're in a room full of all of those people right and we all have levels of hurt 
it's, it's bound to start bouncing off of each other, you know, like, mm -hmm. and I can just imagine. So I just want to say, you know, thank you for sharing that and um, painting that picture too for people. Cause I think mm -hmm. that a lot of people could be inspired by the romanticizing romanticization of like, I visualized it. I went there and, mm -hmm. you know, like I made yeah. this journey, you know, and like, I gave up every, I quit my job and I just was doing my art and everything just magically happened. But like, there mm -hmm. was so many other parts of that story that were not easy to go through. Um, and oh, yeah. you are a resilient person to keep pushing forward and still chase your dream when a lot of people would have had that and like quit, you know, mm -hmm. they would have like went back home a long time ago. Like, you know, like they, they would have, mm -hmm. you know, they might not have even left. Right. Right. You had, right. You had to get out of a situation from the, from the beginning. So I do right. think that there's a beautiful part of reclaiming your story um, mm -hmm. and not letting the things hap that happen to you define you, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm faith-based, right? So I always say all things work in our favor, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. You the goal was to do your art. It's not the way you wanted to do it, but you still did. Like you said, you still got it done. Um, mm -hmm. I think of how I got to uprooted and and the work I do, and I'm just like, yeah, I had to go through some storms too to get to a point where I mm -hmm. could talk about it. So I just want to acknowledge um, that that part of your journey. That's a beautiful thing to come to the other side of, you know. Um, so I want to pause there. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. um, it's not easy. And you've continued, right? Like since then, mm -hmm. you've kind of continued. You went to Thailand, right? And um, you continued on your journey and, and dive deeper into your work. And I'm wondering too, um, how do I, how, how do I want to phrase this? You've continued to jump and you've continued to learn. Like, are you still facing probably not in uh, as severe, I hope, right? Like obstacles, but um, different parts of your journey and different chapters bring out obstacles. So have you learned from that time in New York and were there like some tools? Did you end up getting extra support? You know, cause whenever I hear people are in any type of situation, I'm like, did anybody offer you therapy? Did anybody offer you mm -hmm. support? Like what were yeah. the coping skills you learned to, to be able to still navigate the world after that, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, it took me a long time to begin, like, I don't know, because after that relationship, Mm -hmm. unfortunately the trauma in my life didn't stop like I kept I, I I went through more things that were even more traumatic than that abusive relationship mm -hmm. and things that you know I didn't um I didn't manifest and I didn't um it weren't my fault, but yeah, it's a part of my story. And I was really young and I was just thinking in my life that were extremely, extremely hard. Some things that I probably, that I don't usually say out loud. And I put so much of it in my art where I think if someone were to go back in my website and look at the drawings and be mm -hmm. able to be like okay I can tell what that could be about mm -hmm. yeah I just I kept going through terrible terrible things um, mm -hmm. and looking back now I think I was really in survival mode and didn't know it mm -hmm. but I, I really tried my best and I have so much gratitude for the 20 21 22 year old me because uh, mm -hmm. I started, like, I made a lot of life changes. This is when I really yeah. started diving deep into my spirituality. Mm -hmm. um, and started cooking, like, really healthy food at home. Mm -hmm. um, it's when I started just introducing, like, a very holistic and organic lifestyle into my life. Um, mm -hmm. 
and befriending people. Despite being a hermit, I did make really beautiful and true friends who are still my friends to this day. And I created a, yeah, and I created a life for myself that was good and, and healthy and loving. And like my home was like this beautiful artistic nest. I mean, that's, of course I was a hermit. My home was amazing. Like the way I yeah. set up and everything. Yeah. Although my room, it's New York. So my room was teeny tiny. Like my room yeah. was incredibly small, like a closet. Yeah. But oh my gosh, I made that closet room spectacular like I made it amazing and mm. this is also when I started like yoga and meditation I didn't meditate like the way I meditated back then was way mm. more than I do now like every morning every night I was so dedicated to my meditation and to just healing myself um, so although I was going through so much pain I went through so much pain at that time in my life um but yeah i i found inspiration and strength within myself and with continuing manifesting the life that i wanted um and how i wanted to feel and what i wanted to know i used to read a lot of i collected a lot of books so i had a whole like routine in new york where i would like do my meditation in the morning cook a really healthy breakfast make art, go to my favorite bookstore, um, buy a whole bunch of books, go to my favorite coffee shop, come back home, make art, meditate, go to bed. Like I, I had, I created a comfortable life for myself. Mm. Um, and that's what got me through. And yeah, and it was from there when I really started trusting the universe and and trusting this voice that I had within my heart saying, I think it's time to leave New York. And I went back to my hometown. And mm. after being in my hometown for uh, like nine months, mm -hmm. the opportunity to Thailand came. And yeah, so I don't, I wouldn't <laughs> have gone to Thailand had I stayed in New York. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that, I do want to go back to that because that story is funny too. <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> um, um, no, I think one, I just want to say like, there's something powerful and beautiful and I parallel you in a lot of ways, right? Um, mm -hmm. That, And I hope the people are picking up on it, right? Like I too am resonating with the idea of like, you know, life hands us a lot of pain, right? Um, some mm -hmm. of us more than others, but Either way, this is why I do this segment too. As Black women, I think that we really are the most unprotected and we go through so much that gets, yeah. you know, swept under the rug and we don't talk about and we see it come up in our life over and over and over again, right? And like for you, you saw a pattern happening and you like changed your life. Like mm -hmm. when everything was externally happening, you dive deeper internally, you know, and mm -hmm. I do that too. I, the irony is I wake up and I meditate now too, right? Like I wake up and yeah. I meditate. I yeah. set my intention. I eat breakfast. I don't start doing work until I've done all that, right? Yeah. Um, and my work is talking to people like, and healing people. So mm -hmm. it's like, wait, before I can talk to y'all, I got to make sure I'm good because I don't want to bring anything negative into that space. And mm -hmm. the, just the power of a routine, right? And creating a life for yourself. And I think it's serendipitous mm -hmm. because- I'm putting out a course now that's like create your joy, which is exactly mm -hmm. like what you did, right? It was like, mm -hmm. no, no, no. I didn't come here for this shit. I manifested a beautiful <laughs> ass life. I manifested mm -hmm. a great relationship with my art. I manifested mm -hmm. a beautiful home for myself. I didn't manifest all this other yes. shit. So we're yes. not gonna focus on that shit no more. We're gonna focus on this. Mm -hmm. um, you still, you don't get to have my dreams, right? Yeah. And I think there's a beautiful resiliency in that, right? Of like, no, 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 I still have my dreams and I still want that life. That's the life that I've wanted and that, that's the life that I'm going to create um, mm -hmm. despite, right? Like, despite whatever people want to throw my way. And I think that's, mm -hmm. that's really what you have to have to mm -hmm. be able to like make it in anything, mm -hmm. right? It's like mm -hmm. this belief that one, you can have it, right? It's possible. 
um, but two, that you deserve it. You know, like, I think that's the other Mm -hmm. part that I was feeling through your story of what you were sharing Mm -hmm. is that like, you came to a place of whatever was happening to you, right? You didn't internalize it to the point where you felt like you deserved it. Like Mm -hmm. that you couldn't see that there was another life that was better for you that you actually wanted that you did deserve. And Mm -hmm. um, that part I think is beautiful. And I want, I hope people draw inspiration from that like yeah mm-hmm. shit's gonna be hard but if you can remember um who you are and who you want to be yes then you can you can push forward um not easy but you can push forward right yes yes definitely uh, remembering who you are is what i was thinking and it's what you said it was, mm-hmm. for me personally i don't uh go through my life think of this I deserve that maybe because I was raised to be like extremely humble yeah and that uh my friends are trying to make me be more cocky because <laughs> I'm not Mine too. at all <laughs> yeah they're like talk about shit talk about shit I'll be like oh, yeah, they talk like, about shit. Yeah. even one of my friends mm-hmm. made me do this post on Instagram recently where he told me what to type he was like say I I I've been the goat. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, like, we were no, friends like that. This. Like, I don't talk like this. I can't. He's like, no, you need to talk your shit. You need to let people know you're confident. And I'm like, but I don't show my confidence like this. He's like, no, right? I've been yeah. the goat. <laughs> da Vinci don't got shit on me. He was like, post that. <laughs> and I did. And I was like, <laughs> People like that think I'm so like egotistical and but you know it's really like uncomfortable for me to like I don't know mm-hmm. go through mm-hmm. like you know think like that speak like that or go through life thinking that I deserve anything um, mm-hmm. and just that I can get what I want and um, I can live what I want uh, but in terms of deserving like God gives me so much I wake up healthy every day thank God mm-hmm. and everything else is just extra um but also with when it comes to that I also don't go through my life thinking that the bad things that have happened I deserve like mm-hmm. I don't live in this like I don't know um yeah definitely didn't deserve any of it but yeah. why do they happen then I don't yeah. know why but it's a part of my journey and it will always be a part of my journey. And um, yeah, life is really something. <laughs> Girl, yeah, it's a, it's a roller coaster, let me tell you. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think I had, I struggled with that word deserve for a long time too. Um, mm. And I still do. And I, that's why I said, I'm like, mm. Like it took me a long time to be even right. like at a place where I'm like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to put this course together. Like, Actually, mm-hmm. yeah, if you want to yeah. hire me as your coach, I will coach you. Because, um, mm-hmm. like, it's, you know, there's a calling, there's a purpose that you have. And, like, for me, I felt like I ignored it for a long time, you know. Mm. Um, and so I went on a different type of journey to get here, right. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But it'll always come back to you. And I think for me, yeah. I don't always understand the pain part, too. Like, what you're saying of, like, why the bad things happen. Um and in in some of my deeper reflections right i always try to figure out where in the equation do i fit in you know like okay this person's hurt like they're doing this because of whatever like i try to understand like why they were doing it in the first place or like what you know whatever that case is and then i i realized like oh it ain't got shit to do with me it could have been any other person in this place you know, mm-hmm. like it's literally not personal. Like there's nothing about me mm-hmm. that like specifically has like a sign on my forehead. That's like, right. yeah, like I deserve this pain. Right. So like I had to start mm-hmm. unpacking that because there's a lot of um, just mental shit that happens. Right. Mentally, emotionally um, mm-hmm. that you have to sift through because you're just like, oh, is this my fault? And you have to get to a place where you're like, no, it's not. Mm-hmm. Um and that's part of the journey. And then the other thing is like, 
in in when I see that it's a repetitive cycle, right? Um, not always because because we're not really saying what the, what the the hurt is, but like for mm-hmm. me in relationships, right, or in um, work or because I work a lot too. So it's like when I start mm-hmm. to notice that I have the same problem, right? Like relationships end in the same way or um, well, work is a relationship too. It's just a different kind of one, right? And it's like, mm-hmm. what is this fucking cycle? Then I started to really think about, well, what part of me, like, because like one time is, a, you know, whatever, but when it's a repetitive thing, it's like, oh, am I allowing myself to stay in these spaces that I know are unsafe too, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and like try to do that reflection because there's something that happens to your psyche and trauma that you from a child, like your young childhood knew, right? What you wanted, what you love, what you're passionate about. And then sometimes when things happen, right? Bad things happen, it'll knock you off. And then you'll start to question yourself. And, um, you know, do I really know what I'm trying to do or who I am? Or you start to second guess if you're good enough for certain things. And then you'll kind of allow yourself to stay in situations because you, in a way, will start to believe you deserve that you know? Right. Right. Um, that's true. That's and so true. Mm-hmm. that's why I pointed out, like, I'm so glad there was a part of you, however it came about, right. Whether it was friends that were supporting you, family, um, yourself, your own internal reflection and meditation mm-hmm. to get to that place. Like, actually, no, I don't deserve pain. Nobody yeah. deserves pain. Right. Yeah. Um, yes. So when I say like, oh, I deserve better than this i'm thinking no not just me like when i say i i'm saying all of us deserve better Mm -hmm. than this like Mm -hmm. not not only do i deserve safety in these things but it's like no everybody does and everybody has access to it and should have access to it but there's literally forces and people who try to stop that from happening and so Mm -hmm. um i've tried to like you know it's hard like you know like it's hard to get your brain around those concepts um and I'm so glad that that's that came up in this conversation because I know there's people struggling with that part of it. <laughs> like it's mm-hmm. really hard mm-hmm. to stay in that in that spot. So, um, mm-hmm. I'm wondering too. Let I want to have the little tangent about um, the next step you made because I think Thailand is so like that jump to me <laughs> it was really cool. Um, Life changing. Yes, because it kind of correlates with like the the other question I was going to ask you is kind of like advice to your younger self or to the younger people out there that are watching. I think you've given mm-hmm. a lot, but like in this story of how you ended up in Thailand, I think maybe there's a gem there that would be the advice mm-hmm. you would give, right? Mm-hmm. So Thailand. <sighs> so I was in class animation class and my classmate she was like um yeah uh, I was like okay see you next semester it was like uh towards the end of the semester and we're leaving class she's like oh next semester I'll be here um I'm studying abroad in Thailand mm-hmm. and I was like what but I said like what in my mind first and before anything yeah. came out of my mind and then something just like clicked in my mind. Mm-hmm. Something was like, you have to go. Yeah. You have to go. And I was like, how, how are you going? What is the process? Like, mm-hmm. can I go? Is there space? Like, how do I, I, I want to go too. And she uh, sent me the link and I looked up the site. It was through our university. Um, mm-hmm. I was looking through it and I saw that the deadline had passed two months ago. And I was like, that's not going to stop me. Like, I am meant to go. <laughs> the strong will, the passion, the hard headedness. I was like, I have to go. I have to go. Mm-hmm. And it's this like impulsive fire that I get. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, nothing stopped me from going. And the woman who was head of the study abroad uh, program in the university, I had a meeting with her and she's like, so, you know, the deadline passed two months ago. Mm-hmm. Yes, I know. <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> it's, it's closed. Yeah. And I'm like, you have to let me go. I will do anything. I will do the application today. 
turn it in by mm -hmm. five o'clock. I'll get my recommendation letters, everything, like anything I can do, like, please let me go. Like, you know, the, the program begins next semester. There's time for me. Da, da, da. And I just, she just looked at me and she was like, okay. <laughs> she was like, okay. Yeah. Um, I think she was just, I don't know, remembering her facial expression. And she's also just a beautiful person. And I really think Thailand was really, like, I was meant to go there. And that fire I had in me was mm -hmm. this intuition that was like, you need to do anything you can to make this happen. But that fire yeah. supported me to yeah. behave that way. Because I'm not, yeah. like, like that every day. But I'm mm -hmm. like that with things that matter. And, and whatever it was in me, that intuition, that voice was there in me to support me to say the right words when I was in her office and for her to feel my energy. And I believe in angels. She might have had an angel in my ear, like, just let her go, you know? Because <laughs> yeah. who, like, if things don't work like that. You don't let someone apply for something when the deadline passed two months ago. And yeah. it happened. And within a few months, I was on a plane to Bangkok. Mm. And also, that girl who told me about it, she ended up not going. And I'm the one who went. Not because I took her place. She just decided not to go anymore. Yeah. So it was like, I was like, I was meant to go. <laughs> it was the messenger. She told me about it. She ended up not going herself. I yeah. always think that's funny. I, I had an experience um, minor. I didn't fly to another country. <laughs> like, I just remember it in college having that, like I was gonna go to the job interview, brought a friend along um, and then I ended up not getting it um, mm. and she did. But then that summer I ended up going back home to visit my dad. So I wouldn't have been able to keep mm. the job anyway, you know? Mm. But then her life, like her trajectory and um, everything was so beautiful after that. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I always think there are moments like that where some things aren't meant for you. They are meant for the other person, you know? Mm. So I'm like, that's dope. That is really dope. I also think too, like, I realized we didn't even bring up how all of this um, and now where you're at, that you're, you're also paving a way for um, other artists to, to feel seen and, and to take their journeys and all of that with the Tigray Art Collective, right? So yeah. Um, <laughs> You've been through all of this and now you have mm -hmm. this beautiful, shiny, like rainbow at the end of everything, um, <laughs> which I'm excited about. And I wanted to make sure we we had some mm -hmm. space to talk about because um, I got so wrapped up in your journey. I forgot all the, <laughs> the art collective because that's the that's where we're at now. Um, and in our kind of wrapping up too, like. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder if this ties into your idea of legacy. So like first talk about, mm -hmm. um, you know, what the art collective is and, you know, that, that beautiful new chapter of your life. And, um, mm -hmm. and then we'll, we'll kind of come into like, you know, how does this tie in or does it tie into your idea of legacy for yourself? Mm. Legacy. Yeah. I don't think of that word often. Because uh, I'm just so in the in the present, in the date, yeah, in the present. Uh, but definitely, we we all are creating our legacy right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do so most authentically when we're in the present. Yeah. And I'm grateful for the way in which I live the present. Because after I had moved to Thailand, mm -hmm. um, that's when I started traveling all around the world by myself. Yeah. I moved to Thailand by myself, and that's when I finally got the courage to uh, then travel to Tigray <laughs> by mm -hmm. myself, and uh, and I went to yeah I traveled there, went to Ethiopia multiple times by myself, uh, but yeah I think the travels that I had and the artists and the communities of artists that I met. And mm -hmm. all these different countries that I've uh, lived in or passed through really was inspiring for me and is something that never left my mind because I've made just the most amazing friends, friendships, people I never would have thought I would be friends with from mm -hmm. all over the world. And I think 
within myself that has for me built this foundation uh this knowing uh when it comes to the Tigray art collective like mm-hmm. what i envision it being mm-hmm. and for mm-hmm. uh so me and Madi uh Madi and i met in DC mm-hmm. and we just got along like right away mm-hmm. and after DC the one year commemoration um we kept in touch we facetimed a lot spoke mm-hmm. about like ideas we had and art we were making and shows we want to do in the future and then we started speaking about how it would be great to like bring a community of artists to girl community together and what like an mm-hmm. art group would look like and we just stayed in conversation about it for many many months mm-hmm. um and when it finally came time to be like okay let's do it like it's a new year let's you know, let's finally make the website and make the IG page. Mm-hmm. Uh, write about what we want to do with this. Um, like really begin to solidify our ideas. Because uh, yeah. you can talk about ideas all the time, but ideas can fade away unless you really just take initiative and do and do it. Um, yeah. And then we uh, met Mickey who was like the crypto expert in our community, um, Mm -hmm. teaching people how to become, like how to open, how to buy Bitcoin and how to invest. And he, we started having meetings with him about how um, cryptocurrency and NFT art can be used to raise so much money for Tigray Mm -hmm. um, in such a, with such little effort. Um, Yeah. Because our community is doing so much, which is all great. You know, we're making shirts, we're auctioning art, we're auctioning all sorts of things. We're selling this, we're fundraising this, we're having events mm-hmm. uh, to raise money. Because money is in demand, right? Yeah. Uh, but he's really teaching people how to um, be able to raise so much money in such a small amount of time with such little effort when it comes to cryptocurrency but anyway we started yeah. having meetings with him and yeah we created the Tigray Art Collective and our dream is, is to one bring all the artists uh, in this collective to meet each other to know each other we, we have a group chat we share mm-hmm. like paintings we're working on our designs we're working on um, yeah, the foundation of it is really like forming friendships with each other mm-hmm. and yeah. keeping this energy of creativity alive. Um, and yeah, when it comes to what we want to do, there's so many things. Art exhibitions, but like amazing mm-hmm. exhibitions. Exhibitions where like experiences. Um, yeah. Where you walk into a gallery and you're just surrounded with the most amazing art. Because I feel like people, they see my art on this little phone, you know? Yeah. You're really just seeing like an image this small of my of my work and of yeah. my work and of all these other artists. But to be able to experience it in person is a yeah. different experience that a lot of us have not been able to have. Um, so we want to have amazing shows. We, we have so many idea film screenings. Um, organizing protest art for our marches to just bring them to another level, social media campaigns that combine artists, the work of artists with strong and powerful messaging uh, Mm -hmm. that can help break us out of our echo chamber. Like we have so many things we want to do uh, that we are going to do. And yeah, we all just have this like energy of excitement, like running through all of us Mm because we, we know that, like great things are coming yeah and the opportunity that we have not sought out but have just come to us mm-hmm. are amazing and yeah we can't wait to share them when the time comes uh but yeah it's been it's been really good i mean it's been really blessed and i know when something is blessed because when things are just able to come to you and just to work out seamlessly that's oh yeah, kind of how I go throughout my life, really. <laughs> like, like any, 
any um your passion things really will just happen they, I they believe always do in my experience like i've never sought out i've never really sought out much to be so i've always just made sure i was always making art mm -hmm. and always getting better at it but i'm getting better at it through every painting i do but just always yes making art and making it with my heart and my soul to the best that I can. And then everything else follows everything, every single thing. I hope they caught that. I hope they really caught that. Cause if and what I got, go ahead. Um, I can give examples of what I mean by things just follow. Like I never, I was published in Vogue. I was interviewed by BBC. I never mm -hmm. sought those out. They came mm -hmm. to me. Every screening I've had, every show, all these like speaking opportunities where I'm paid thousands just to speak on stage about my art. I never mm -hmm. applied for that. I never sought that out. It just came to me. Mm -hmm. Because when you are doing your work and you're and you're sharing it in the world and your art, like I'm painting, I, I can't mm -hmm. share work with the world if I'm not making it. Mm, that part. So I'm painting, I'm painting, I'm making films, I'm doing it, I love to do it, and I'm excited about what I'm doing, I'm a storyteller, I'm putting art in my world, and I'm making my own world, and putting it in my art, and sharing it with the world, and mm -hmm. it just grows and grows and grows naturally, it grows. Yeah. That's what works for me, and then people come to me, I rarely seek anything, except yeah. my growing in my art. No, that's beautiful because that's what I was gathering from even your take on legacy, right? Like what I wrote down was, um, you know, I said, I think what I took was legacy is made in the present, right? Like you don't mm -hmm. get to 60 and then you're like, oh, what legacy did I leave? No, no, no. You've been leaving it all along by how you're moving. Mm -hmm things that you're doing, your journey, you're, it's, you're creating a blueprint already, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought that was really powerful. I don't think I've had an answer necessarily like that. And I think what your legacy feels like to me um, is, is what happens when you move in alignment, you know, mm -hmm. right? Like when you just move in alignment all along, like things like what you said, do work out for you. Um, yeah. And that is really a beautiful legacy to leave people. So I hope they like pick that up. <laughs> it's not an easy journey at all. Um, mm -hmm. This has been phenomenal. And, and I want to say too, like usually at the end, I like to affirm my guest and really just, I, I really believe in speaking life into people. And mm -hmm. I know, yeah, like I know, um, obviously too, cause Madi is my friend. <laughs> and, um, mm -hmm. so I'm always like really excited about what you guys are doing, yes. but just like the energy that both of you have, um, in terms of what you're passionate about and, and how you want to help people. Right. And like how you want people to feel seen and heard and, um, the way you do that. Right. Like I, I tell Madi too, right. Like there's, there's a lot of people who talk about things and then there's people who do them you know and like mm -hmm. you're someone who does it like oh, and yeah. that is not an easy thing to do like to you it's probably normal at this point right like you're just oh yes there. <laughs> right like i meet a lot of people who their biggest problem and why they come to me for help is their belief system right and their mm -hmm. mindset and I think that you are not going to have a problem achieving much, right? Like, because you have the mindset already and you have, you know, the passion and the work ethic, right? Like the discipline to, to go after what it is that you want. And for me, mm -hmm. it's like really exciting just to see where that's going to take you. Like, mm -hmm. I really see the, the magic and the beauty of the Ticket Eye Art Collective, um, I'm not gonna lie. I I try to in my mind take imaginary credit for this too, because like, I'm like, <laughs> I told I remember, um, and we're not out there yet too. But I remember like me and Madi having different conversations of when she started getting back into her art, right, and mm, like yeah. taking a pause off of everything to get back in it. And I was like, yeah, do that shit, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, just do that. Like, yeah. you're, like you're 
you're super passionate about art. Every time I talk to her about it, she's always thinking about the creative, right? And mm -hmm. um, and so, and we kept talking about different projects and we're like, we're gonna need artists, we're gonna need artists. And then you guys, like, you know, you magical geniuses were like, let's like make a group. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> like, you know, like this is gonna be fantastic because yeah. there's, um, I love people who build. I love people who bring, yes. you know, um, community together and who mm -hmm. really want the intention to be um, like just creativity and growth and like exploration mm -hmm. and just like create space for people to exist, right? Like, mm -hmm. and I yeah. think when you lead with that heart um, and you've already found success on your own, it's such a beautiful chapter now to be able to turn around and like help the next person figure that out too mm -hmm. um yeah and, definitely and to be that support so I yeah, I, I love it you. thank you I love it yeah. and one thing I'll say um I'm definitely a person of getting things done like action 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 fire action like that's who I am um but also your life flows from your state of being. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of times in my life, a lot of dark places, like rock bottom places where no action could come from or no, no healthy action at that. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's only when I'm <clears throat> in the right state of mind and my health, mm -hmm. health is, has to be the priority or else you can't get anything done. And I've had to make a lot of sacrifices. Yeah. And a, huge, huge life changes mm -hmm. um, so that I'm a healthy person and I'm not giving any more years of my life to depression. And because an artist can make art and, you know, one, I don't, you know, you can make art and be in shows and sell your art and live the life of your dreams, but still be uh, very unhealthy. And yeah. that's not sustainable, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, therapy started that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> in uh, yeah, 2020 or no, yeah. 2021, 2020. Yeah. Yeah. No, 2021, I started therapy. Yeah. Life-saving. Mm -hmm. And a lot of other things I had to do to get my health, like, on the right track. Things I never thought I would start, but yeah. it was necessary, especially with what we're dealing with now in Tigray. Like, you know, a lot of us have been on the edge of insanity and I was definitely hanging off of that edge, and I had to do. I had to do what I had to do to pull myself back and get myself healthy again. And I'm so happy I did because I don't think this Degray Art Collective would be in existence mm -hmm. had I decisions I made for my health. Mm -hmm. So I, no, I wanted to say that I don't want to seem like I'm, you know. This action no. manifester, you know, like yeah. meditation wasn't enough for me uh, in the dark place that I was. Yoga wasn't enough. Vegetarian lifestyle wasn't enough, you know? You, you kind of need to get a baseline in order to even have the will to meditate, to have the willpower to eat healthy, to have the willpower to just get out of bed, you know? So I had to do a lot more than just meditate. <laughs> Yeah. To, no, you got to get to the part where you can meditate. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So I thought I really wanted to say that. Oh, no. Please do. I I share that <laughs> messaging all the time. I push yeah. like yeah. self care and, and therapy in any form, right? In any form, because mm -hmm. there's many forms of therapy, but just the process yeah. of reflection and evaluation is so necessary to your life. And so, no, thank you for adding that because it is so important. And um, that's why I also have you guys share the hard parts and the obstacles mm -hmm. because you don't just you don't just get to magically make your way through. You need to support yourself oh, yeah. through it, right? And you need mm -hmm. the help to get there. And um, help looks different for everybody. So 
No, thank you for sharing that and adding that because that's what we're here for. That's like, yo, that's why that's the only reason why I do this show, guys, is to try to get people like healthy, inspired, getting their life back. You know, um, it life is hard, but it doesn't have to be. You know, like Mm -hmm. doesn't have to be lonely. Doesn't mean you can't get support. Doesn't mean you have to do it by yourself. Like, Mm -hmm. not at all. Does not mean you have to do it by yourself. And there's plenty of people around who have already gone further in the journey. So let them help you. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. that's really what I tell yeah. people. Just let them help you. So mm-hmm. I appreciate you so much, Gabby, for coming on. Um, Thank yo, you. I feel like I learned so much today. I have hella notes. So hey. <laughs> I, <learned. laughs> yes, I have hella notes. I think that everything um, was just so inspiring and you were just so open and vulnerable and sharing. So I really appreciate you doing that. And I hope the audience does too. I know that if they allow themselves, they will be moved and inspired as well. Um, And make sure you guys don't forget, subscribe, like, share everywhere. Make sure you're following us on Twitter at Uprooted Network. Make sure you're following Gabby everywhere. You know, I can never say this right. I How do you (laughs) actually say your handle? (laughs) So it's my last name, Tess Five. Yes. And then... T-R-A is art backwards. Okay. I knew there was a story there. Okay. So just make sure you're following <laughs> Gabby everywhere. People and say all sorts of names. They're like, yeah, I was like, that's not tra- 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 tra. I was like, that's not right. I knew it was your last name, but I was like, there's there's a story here. <laughs> um, and yeah, make sure yeah. y'all are following Tigray Art Collective. Okay. Um, if you are an artist, if you know an artist, um, if you have ideas, share them with them. They're doing really so much amazing dope work for all of us. So yeah, uh, make are. sure you're tapping in. <laughs> we appreciate y'all. Everybody, that is Black Women Wednesday. Um, you are watching the Uproot and Network, <laughs> and we will see you next week. Thanks, Gabby. Thank you.